Hey everybody, it's RC with MarineHowTo.com. Today we're in the shop talking about voltage transients uh, on vessels equipped where we're doing both starting loads and uh, electronics or house bank use off the house bank. Um, it's never a bad idea to have a dedicated starting circuit, but on a lot of boats uh, that gets into a costly swap over, uh, especially where switches are mounted in DC panels, which can be expensive to convert and get a guy in there to do it. So what I want to talk about today is is how to properly wire your vessel to avoid the risk of, of uh, voltage transients from starter motors and such. Now the problem is that, that most books uh, that talk about the subject or doc talk only seems to consider starter motors and I have a starter motor wired up right here. Uh, but the problem with voltage transients on a on any battery bank is you, you simply can't get away with them the way that boats are being built today. We have so many devices on boats. We have uh, electric winches on sailboats. We have windlasses on both power and sailboats. They will do the same thing. Inside this solenoid here is an iron core and then winding around it. And what happens is when you energize that core, creates a magnet and when you de-energize it it can create a voltage transient or a voltage spike and what we're going to see here in just a second is uh, the Fluke 289 is going to capture that up here we have our average voltage or our, our you know static voltage uh, peak maximum average and then peak minimum now this meter captures transients extremely quickly uh, 25 uh, microseconds uh, not milliseconds microseconds which is 0 0.00025 seconds uh, just uh, it, it's as fast as is is uh, most uh, decent oscilloscopes that you use in the field so what we're gonna do I've also got a a fluke uh, 376 here that captures inrush current so I'm gonna this is the starter button I simply have it wired in here uh, these two terminals here are going to represent our house uh, DC panel. And right now I've got the uh, meter over directly on the starter to show that location uh, plays a direct role. Where you wire your electronics into plays a direct role. So on three, I'm going to hit this. One, two, three. All right. Now, the important thing to notice here is that even without the engine in place, okay, this little starter motor from a Westerbeek 30B3 draws 366 amps of inrush current. That's a lot. Uh, if, if I were to run this thing continuously, let it settle out, it settles out about 100 amps. But uh, we're at 366 just to get it turning over, okay? But if we look over here, what we can see is at the starter motor, when we're wired very close to it, we developed a voltage transient of 22.9 volts. And that's that's not going to damage uh, your typical 12-volt marine instruments. But uh, the bottom line is you want to take your instruments and your house bank loads from as close to the battery as you can. Now, the one 2 bolt switch, the closest that you can switch them is the common post here. Um, but when we look over at... Uh, at the negative side, what we can see here, this is our DC load, this is a shunt, and then I have a negative bus out there. So this is the starter cable from that bus. So we've got the house bank loads wired as uh, close to the negative post of the battery terminal as we can, and then the uh, starter motor is coming from the engine into the start battery and the start battery is parallel wired over to the house bank. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move these two wires over to represent our DC panel. And what we're going to see is that a battery bank, I'm going to reset this, I'm going to reset this, what we're going to see is that a battery bank, a 12 volt battery bank, does an exceptional job at clamping or, or filtering out those voltage transients. Okay, I'm going to click it now. 
All right, now that's a big difference. Um, if we can see this, uh, our peak voltage was 13.31. Again, obviously it's not gonna damage any of our electronics. Um, our low voltage peak, again, this, this peak is measured at this 364, 366, 370 amp range. And that includes all the voltage drop through all the terminals. We have battery bank fuses on here. Each battery bank has a fuse. Uh, so, and every terminal creates some sort of resistance point. So this is our peak low voltage at these two terminals. And before we saw the peak low voltage here. But again, uh, what we're looking at is by properly wiring the vessel and not taking an autopilot uh, negative or a GPS pilot and just haphazardly connecting it into the engine block, which is very close to the starter motor, or taking your positive leads right off of the wire that leads to your engine panel, um, we want to get back to the battery switch and as close to the batteries as possible where we pick up our DC panel loads. And it makes a huge difference. The location uh, of your DC wiring, where that connects into the battery bank, is extremely important if you want to avoid this. Um, obviously, if you really want to avoid it, you can uh, put in a dedicated start battery, but again, we don't get around the potential for voltage spike spikes simply by doing that because we have many items that will be connected to the house bank. Windlasses, winches, um, uh, water makers, any any type of motor can throw a spike, any type of solenoid can throw a spike. Uh, so, you know, we want to be conscious uh, of that. So, by simply taking your DC panel loads as close to the battery bank as we can get, and over there I have the shunt, and the only reason I put that in there is because a lot of boats have a battery monitor. So the closest we can get to the battery bank is the shunt negative terminal. But by making that jumper wire between the shunt and the negative of the battery bank as short as possible, we, we help to minimize that voltage uh, transient. And, and we've done that here. Um, now one thing I also want to show is, um, and this is quite interesting because, you know, a lot of boaters worry about starting off the house bank. And um, the house bank, when you parallel these batteries, uh, this bank is a 12.8, the start battery is at 12.8 volts, that's a fully charged battery. Um, I'm going to go back over to this bank, and we can see that it's at about 12.6, so that bank I know when it's full is 12.73. Uh, and these are both used battery banks, but they're in okay shape, uh, but it's rep pretty representative of what we see out there. So I'm just going to reset this, I've got that on inrush, and I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay, so that time our voltage transient was only 13.6, 0.06. So again, not too bad. Um, but when we look down here, our, our peak low voltage dropped to 6.31. And what happens with DC motors, take a look at our inrush current. We were only able to develop 318 amps as opposed to 365 or 370 amps. Because we had less available voltage at the starter motor with a single battery than we do with a bank of, of house batteries, even, even when those batteries at 50% depth of discharge, you're still, your starter motor is still probably going to be happier unless your banks are getting really tired um, starting off the house bank uh, than they will be starting off just the, the, the uh, dedicated start battery. So that avoids a lot of useless switching. A lot of people still want to have a secondary battery, which is a good idea in case you murder the house bank. Um, but we don't need to be constantly switching back and forth uh, in, in order to manage our banks. And one other thing that, that I will just um, show you here um, is battery switches. I know there's a lot of questions out there Oh, you know, you can't switch your battery with the engine running. And I generally don't advise it because people make mistakes. And what we're looking at here right now, battery's off. We got no no voltage. Uh, this is a very, very sensitive meter, so it's gonna it's gonna read things that are extremely sensitive. Um, so 12.64. 
Now, if I try to go between one and two, okay, watch what happens to the peak low voltage, no matter how fast I do this. Ready? One, two, three. We open circuited that, okay? And what happens is if you leave your alternator wired in through the battery switch, and we rotate the switch from bank one to two through the off position, okay, no matter how, you can't do it fast enough as a human being between here and here to not open circuit that. And when you do that, what happens is uh, the, the voltage in the alternator, when it's running at full current, has nowhere to go. So we have a massive voltage spike in the alternator, and we blow the diodes out of it. And we destroy the alternator. But so what I'm going to show you now is that any good battery switch, and the easiest way to test this is with a light bulb, but this meter is so sensitive and so fast uh, that, you know, up to the thousandths of a second it can capture these transients. I'm going to do this even really slowly, and we're going to watch that this switch is what's called make before break. And we can see that I just went from one to one to two, and now to bank two, and we never dropped voltage. Our peak low is still 12.38. So I can go back and do that again. Nothing. But no matter now, watch this. No matter how fast I do this, one, two, three, we still open circuited that alternator. We would have blown it. So when you're switching, if you have the engine running, these battery switches often say right on them, "Do not uh, switch with motor running." Uh, but you can, provided you just do it the right way, uh, because it should be what's called a make-before brake switch. So I hope that helps. Um, again, keep in mind the wiring. Oh, down here, um, and I just, I apologize, I'm not a good video guy, but um, I also have my oscilloscope hooked up to, <coughs> excuse me, the battery bank across it and um, had it record one of the voltage spikes and connected at the battery let me slide this over right here um, this is this spike here is measured in 200 millivolt increments okay so when I go up here we can see what happened at the battery 12.7 volts And the peak low was about 12.2 volts. So we can see the difference of, of where you're connected into the system. Um, you know, in this, uh, obviously, this is an oscilloscope. It can capture these things uh, even faster than that fluke can. But the fluke is is more than capable enough of capturing these, and that's what I that what I use in the field. So. I hope all this helps put an understanding as to um, where we want to wire stuff. I'm just going to take a walk around the system here so you can see. Um, again, our negative down in here runs across the bench into the shunt. And I have this as close to the battery because, so what a shunt is, if we're measuring current, Nothing can be on this side of the shunt because this is connected to the battery. This is like the water meter in your house. If we go over here, we're not going to read that current. So I've got the starter motor at the end of a negative distribution bus here so that my DC panel is actually closer uh, to the batteries themselves than the starter motor is. And the starter motor cable just runs along here into my workbench and again up to the, the start bank where we have it paralleled uh, and then that's that's how that goes and then each battery had a 300 amp marine rated battery fuse on it uh, this one's got a double terminal fuse block on it but only one of them were being used right now you could bring your alternator into this second one here um, so in any event that is uh, that's what we're looking at and I'll do it one more time for you. We'll, actually, maybe this time we'll look at the averages. Zero that. Okay. 
So that was again house bank number one. Uh, peak max voltage uh, at the DC panel was 13.25 volts. And we saw earlier that we can exceed 22 volts. Um, peak minimum at the DC panel was 9.84 volts. But again, this is for extreme fractions of a second and your electronics should not drop out at that voltage um, because the average voltage is, is considerably higher. If we watch this voltage here, we can see. And what we saw down here when I had that cranking was that it settled out at about 100 amps. And remember, this starter isn't even connected to a motor, okay? This is 100 amps just sitting here on the workbench and almost 370 amps uh, without the motor connected for just the inrush. So hope that helps put it into perspective. Where you wire your DC panel and your electronics into the boat matters if you're going to be starting off the house bank. But keep in mind that any bank that can be paralleled for starting, if you got into a situation um, and you're concerned about it, uh, have an electrician come out with a Fluke 289 or uh, simply turn off your electronics when you start the motor. Uh, but if it's properly wired, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Hope that helps.